News alert and chilling new details about that extremist compound in New Mexico. Authorities now revealing the suspects there were planning a very sinister attack on a hospital. Todd Pyro joins us live to break down the busted terror plot. Todd. Robert Jackie, good morning. Prosecutors in Taos County citing interviews with 11 children found starved and living in squalor. Say suspect Yanni Lavalle singled out Atlanta's Grady Hospital as a target wanting to confront so-called corrupt institutions, possibly because of treatment her mother received there. In addition, investigators recovered a 10-page handwritten document titled Phases of a Terrorist Attack, which allegedly instructed children to shoot or otherwise attack the non-believer. Authorities adding that Levaye and her partner Siraj Ibn Wahaj would laugh and joke about dying in jihad. You'll recall that Wahaj allegedly took his three-year-old son out of Georgia to New Mexico without taking medications the boy needed to treat severe health problems. The child's remains were found on August 6th inside an underground tunnel at that compound. The latest filings from prosecutors come as part of their appeal of a district judge's order that could allow at least three of the five adult defendants to be released on house arrest with just ankle monitors. Judge Sarah Backus said the previous evidence was troubling, but did not indicate, in her words, any clear threat to public safety. In addition to child abuse charges, Levi is also being held on accusations by federal immigration authorities that she overstayed her non-immigrant visa after arriving 20 years ago from Haiti. Jackie. All right, such an awful story. Thank you, Todd. Heavily armed agents swarmed the Baltimore home of the gunman accused of opening fire at a video game tournament. Police say David Katz fired multiple shots, killing two people and injuring 11 others. It happened as a game of Madden NFL 19 played out at a mall in Jacksonville. Katz then turning the gun on himself. Witnesses say the shooter had just lost in the tournament and was upset about that. Investigators are working to figure out a motive. Shots fired at a police chasing down an alleged shoplifter in a crowded Walmart parking lot. Stop what, you, stop what you're doing on this one and watch it. It's crazy. <laughs> Terrifying body cam footage shows the uh, rookie officer confronting 23-year-old Charles Purvis as he walks out the door of the Albuquerque store. You can see the gun in the suspect's right hand there. The officer, just 10 weeks out of the academy, did not fire back. Purvis was later arrested. Nobody was hurt. All right, a federal judge set to rule on 3D printed guns today. The issue, posting gun blueprints online. The Seattle judge has blocked their release up until now, but feels the president or Congress should solve the bigger picture problem here. The man behind the blueprints says posting them online is a Second Amendment right. Critics say it is a threat to public safety. A multi-million dollar scandal forcing West Virginia to replace its Supreme Court with two interim judges. Governor Jim Justice appointing Congressman Evan Jenkins and West Virginia House Speaker Tim Armstead to the court until November's special election. Their appointments coming after the state's entire Supreme Court was impeached over wasteful spending and criminal misconduct accusations. The four of them combined spending nearly four million dollars on lavish office renovations. Unbelievable story. Is he right? Yeah. Uh, Senator John McCain remembered around the world this morning for his ability to transcend polarized politics and unite the country. Despite our differences, much more unites us than divides us. We are fellow Americans, and that's an association that means more to me than any other. All right. Joining us now to react the legacy to the legacy of this political icon is a former strategist for the McCain Palin 2008 campaign and the author of Jumping the Isle. Oliver McGee joins us today. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on. Uh, you lost a friend over the weekend uh, and the country lost a, a great man, somebody that really uh, made this country proud. Absolutely, Rob. Um, I, uh, in preparing for the segment, I read the wonderful tribute by his good friend Joey Lieberman, uh, which appears in Newsmax this morning. Um, I came away with the sense that John McCain was a maverick, an independent, like Joe Lieberman, but they were also lawmakers in the uh, spirit of Salome, the contrarian. And in my book, Jump an Isle, I talk about how we can be a contrarian in our independent thinking and our thought. And these two mavericks, and Joey Lieberman and John McCain, good friends, were mavericks. They were independents. And that was working across the aisle, and they represented Jump in the Isle spirit in, in 
and, and bipartisanship. Uh, they also worked very closely, as we were on 9 11, on the commission and bringing that as an independent commission to essentially lead to recommendations for the complete reorganization of the defense and security apparatus that we enjoy today under President Trump. Uh, and that was the first reorganization since uh, the Cold War, uh, the Truman days. Uh, this was in the spirit of James Forrestal and Dean Acheson. And these were really, really great thinkers. And this is what John McCain and Joe, Joey Lieberman gave us uh, in, their, in, in, in John McCain's legacy. And I also owe my, uh, my legacy for politics for John McCain, because he introduced me to the great Mo Udall, where I was a, uh, mm. a little graduate student, doctoral student in Arizona, and I was working inside uh, Mo Udall, Udall's office, helping him as an, uh, as an additional maverick in a salon in lawmaking with John McCain. Tell us what it was like to be behind the scenes with Senator John McCain. Uh, I found him to be a very good mentor, uh, as I referenced in bringing me together with Mo Udall. Uh, both the two men were very, very good friends, and they took a lone uh, African-American uh, engineer and introduced him to the ways of the government, and they were really mentoring me. Uh, when I worked in uh, Mo Udall's office, he was in the advanced stages of Parkinson's disease, and John McCain was always constantly uh, coming in and, and, and giving me encouragement. And these, watching these two stalwarts of politics and they were both in the House of Representatives, they gave me a sense to rise up from a calculus book and start thinking about what's good for the benefits of society. And they taught me about the role of science and technology for the benefits of society. And I eventually ended up in the White House, and I'm a White House alumnus standing here right now. I also think that my support for John McCain today is the public service that I have to do as a White House alumnus. You have to basically step up for war heroes and for leaders like this uh, who is now relying in the state in the Capitol Rotunda, and I give my sympathies and condolences to the families of the McCain family right now. Mm -hmm. And the nation is basically honoring a man who basically provided foundations for us to be great again today. De devoted his, pretty much his entire life devoted to this country in one way or another. And, and what a story he had, and this week will be much about remembering uh, the late senator. Thank you, sir, so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, folks, for having me. I'm honored. Of course. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, 37 minutes after the hour, Democrats vote to strip power from superdelegates. It's the same system that uh, helped to secure Hillary Clinton's nomination. What does this mean for elections going forward? Some big changes at the DNC. Our political panel will debate coming up. And skipping class, cop up the cash, where a controversial plan is forcing delinquent kids to pay hundreds of dollars for skipping class. Hmm.